welcome to lesson three. We'll talk about creating and setting up mean project. Okay. We'll do some MVC and deploy your Heroku. Okay. So we talked about the traditional and rapid application uh, development where instead of like a big bang approach, right? Where you just show it at the end, we um, do simple iterations, small iterations, uh, features and bug fixes and get some feedback right away. Uh, meaning you test implement and get some feedback, right? And then go back to that cycle, right? Technologies, as we already mentioned before, the end product as a review, web application with Express, you now start creating the main express application right um, we also want to create the project and encapsulating the express application okay so we need to so we're using express and express is a framework of node.js right and node um, uses node package manager for the libraries right so when you want to define the packages that you want to use, you do want to put them in the package.json, right? Um, if you have any de de dependencies, it's in package.json, right? Um, if you want to install, you do want to do npm install, right? So again, express easier server setup with just uh, express um, require express and you can instantiate an express object, right? Routings as well, you um, it can instantiate a router object. Okay, views you can um, create HTML responses um, as a view, right? Okay, with session support as well. Okay. Again, we're still not doing the REST API here. Here, that's why session support you store a session, right? Um, defining packages with package.json, it's a JSON, so it's using a JavaScript object notation with the curly brackets with a key value pairing. Let's say name is a key, value is module 03, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are metadata about the uh, project, right? Um, and also includes the package dependencies, right? So when let's say you um, grab a project, you cloned it from GitHub or GitLab, right? And it's, let's say, a node or express, as, as, or it has the package.json once you uh, enter in your shell npm install in that project folder it will basically install and uh, download all those dependencies that is mentioned the package.json the reason for that is uh, because it will install a lot of node modules which is the packages right um, people I mean um, we don't usually um, share our code or host our code with the node modules the reason for that is um, it makes the project file size very big to just um, uh, to just move it around right meaning if i want a copy of that i don't need to grab the big big node modules folder right i could just grab um, some of the files and this package.json and I do npm install, and it's faster for me to just do that. Okay, so working with uh, versions, uh, the left hand, the leftmost numbers uh, or digits are major version. Usually, when this these changes, right, it means that there might be uh, uh, a compatibility issue now. So let's say. Um, you're running a node 11 and it requires you to run node 12 that might not work right but in any case if you do have let's say 18 and 2 which is a minor and patch version right um, if you do have the same major version most likely it would still work right there's no breaking changes that's what they say okay and it's always important to know what version you're using, especially when you're Googling, right? Because you may end up, let's say, searching and getting an answer for an older version, which might break your application more, okay? You can use a prefix um, so that um, you place a minor version with a wildcard, right? You can also use the tilde prefix 
as the patch version to be the wildcard. Okay. Install node dependencies with npm. So as we mentioned that um, we have the package.json. Let's say you open that up uh, and view the file, right? Let's say it's in the folder and you hit npm install in your command line or shell. It will now create a node modules folder and download the necessary packages that was specified in the package.json. Okay. So when you create an express project, um, you need to install the pieces. You verify the installation project folder, express installation, express project. Okay. So you do need uh, Node.js because um, Express is dependent on Node.js. It's a framework of Node.js, right? Um, you have to have a version control as a practice, right? As it being used for enterprise. Your Heroku is for deployment. But to view your code, you can you should use a Visual Studio Code because it's a lightweight editor or IDE. To verify the installation, uh, we just use the dash dash version um, for each of the specific installations that we've done, right? So you go to your command line, your terminal or your shell to do these. So creating a project folder without scaffolding and with scaffolding, right? So uh, another term to understand this is if you don't have a scaffolding means that you don't have a structure to build on top of, right? With scaffolding, you do have some structure now to build on top of it easily. Okay, so question now is which HTML template engine to use, whether um, we can use um, Pug, formerly known as Jade, um, as um, it has a great compatibility with Express, right? Be very, very careful with um, weird uh, characters and spaces as it will break your code with your uh, pug files, um, don't just copy paste. Um, try to type it on your own because when you copy paste, you do get some garbage. Um, looks like a space, but it's a garbage character. Okay, and whether to create a git ignore file. Git ignore allows you to ignore, specify what files you want to ignore, so it won't be tracked by the version control, right? Uh, in some cases, we want these such as, for example, your environment variables that holds your uh, API keys, which is unique to you. Think of the API keys as your login and passwords, right? You don't want them being tracked or being sent to the uh, online public repository, right? You also don't want the node modules to be sent over because it defeats the purpose of your package.json, right? Um, because you do want the others to install it instead of downloading a big file in your repo. Okay. Uh, the command below is the express view pug git to install. And um, next, creating an express project and trying it out. So once you have your express code uh, up and running, you do um, npm start or node the app.js, try it out. And now you can go to any browser and hit the uh, localhost 3000, right? Or whatever the default port was uh, mentioned or used. Okay. So here's um, a flow, right? A process flow, right? So as a visitor, let's say as a user, enters a URL in the browser, browser requests URL from server, express runs requests through all middleware spe specified in app.js. In your code base, it would say app.use, right? Those are middlewares. Essentially, it's what you want to do with, let's say, a request, right? Before it um, goes to the next thing, right? And then it then goes to the router. Um, then the router, compile data and view the H template into HTML. And alongside with the uh, persistent data stored in the database. And now you... Once that's complete, right? We can it can now create that HTML that can be returned to the browser, right? The browser requests for uh, uh, CSS files reference reference in the HTML. Uh, Express runs through all through middleware, right? You may or may not have this, right? Uh, middlewares, and then goes through the static folder, 
matches request to a files path in specified static folder. These are, let's say, your assets, right? Including your CSS file, images, right? And then the browser completes the rendering of the web page and shows it to your visitor, right? Okay, modifying Express for MVC. So MVC, um, in the easiest way possible, it's just basically folder structures to decouple your code, right? Um, it stands for model view controller, wherein instead of in one file, you have your model view and controller, you split it, okay? Software design and architecture stack. Uh, these are the things that you can learn more as you go, right? Uh, right now, what we are learning is the architectural pattern, the second one on the top. It's more MVC, model view controller, right? And we'll be touching on, um, if you go to the Angular, that's going to be touching on the component base, right? Design patterns, design principles, OOP, and so on and so forth. So MVC, the user sees a view, right? Um, and the user interacts with it. Um, and the controller um, would be the one to um, communicate with the model, right? And the model would now um, update the view, right? User uses controller, controller manipulates model, model updates view, view sees user hmm. not not quite sure about this one <clears throat> a bird's eye view of mvc so request comes into application it's a request of resource right it gets routed to a controller right so router would check which controller should i send it to right and then uh, next controller may send request to model and controller would check first do I need to send back a data from the database? Was that the request? If yes, then I'll communicate with the database, right? Uh, the model now responds to the controller, right? Um, and then controller merges data with view and send that as a response. Okay, let's head back again. The user hits a URL, right? That certain URL, the router would check which controller is being called based on that URL, okay? Now, the controller, specific controller is called. It would now, let's say, requires data from the database. It would now check which function or model, right, or query or Mungu's um, statement that it needs to execute so that it can communicate to the database and query the right way. Right, and then gets a response back, and so on and so forth. Okay, changing the folder structure, right? So we do wanna have an app server. So we just put all the files about the application server there. And create your subfolders, controllers, and models, and view, right? And now we do wanna update this, um, your views folder location right you do the app.set set is basically just um think of it like variable assigning right in this case when you say app.set views you have a um, variable named views and you want to set it to the path.join right whatever is the value of the directory name and the views right so it's essentially just a path in your local machine right or in your project folder sorry uh, the new routes folder, so you, because you moved it, right? So now you would change the path where it would require to get that file or reference to that file. As you can see, we added the app underscore server. Okay, so the ES stuff again, right? We are mostly using ES6 or using the class objects from ES6. And it's also called ES2015. Hey, splitting controllers from the routes, right? Um, as you can see, we have first, we have the express, right? Require express, and then assign it to a variable express. And then now we have the router variable, 
which um, basically instantiate a router object. And now we also require this controller. So the control main is referencing from that controller file, right? Um, now, with the router.get, if someone requested for the, um, the website without any slash whatever name, right? Just the homepage or the root, to be more exact, the root, then the router would now um, call the control main dot index, right? That code file, which is a controller, right? You also want to export the router, right? Module export router, so you can use that again. Mm -hmm. So um, the one, two, three, so let's say get home page, right? So you do have uh, the variable index, constant variable index, and you have a anonymous function here, which has two um, parameters, the request and response. These are the standards, right? So these are callbacks. And uh, we have the rest.render. So it means that response, as a response to that get request, will render the index uh, with the, this title express, right? So it would grab that index, right? Um, and then also pass in this uh, title key with the value express so that we can reuse the title keyword, right? Okay. So as you can see, one, create the index function, two, includes controller code for the home page. And three exposes the index function as a method. Yeah. Okay. So separating the controller logic from the route, right? We want to keep the coupling. So it's just move it. Download Bootstrap and add it to the application using Bootstrap in the application. Okay, so uh, responsive web design, it means that if we change the um, screen size, let's say from a laptop to a tablet to a phone, it should uh, be responsive enough to make sure that um, it's still, we still see the correct contents, right? If it's not responsive, what would happen, right, from if this was rendered in a mobile and it's not responsive, you might see just like this, a half, right? Like a title that you don't see all, a content that you see half, and the footer that you see half, and you don't see a side, right? So you download install Express, um, download and add Bootstrap. And after adding Bootstrap, you all have this uh, files that you can use. Okay, the index.pub, an introduction to that, you start with the extends, then space layout, block space content, space space h1 equals space title, right? Be careful of all those spaces, right? So, okay. So the first one is declares that this file is extending the layout file, right? And two declares that the following section goes into an area of the layout file called content. Right, h1 p tags to the content area. Okay, you, what you're seeing here is the hashtag um, title, right? Hashtag curly brace title. So it's using uh, the variable in the title. Okay, so default layout dot pug file, right? So we have when we inspect the layout file, it would look like this. So it means that every time you use extends layout, it's rendering this part as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, we have this um, layout.pog, including bootstrap references. Don't worry about this. These are just uh, usually the setup, right? The things that we need for the uh, layout. Um, and usually we have like these standards that we have to have the meta, the link, and some of the dependencies for Bootstrap, and that's it. You never have to mess around with it again. Okay, so right now with just the Bootstrap and 
a simple use of the bootstrap classes, you are able to create something like this, right? If you try to build this in CSS, you may build it fast or not. When the design becomes more complex and you're not a designer, it might take you a long time. So if you want to make it live in Heroku, um, first, a quick alternative is you can expose your uh, laptop to publicly, which you don't want to. That's why you want to host it somewhere, right? So you can have a Heroku setup and there should be information on how to set up your Heroku account, right? It has Fury tier, okay? Um, you're pushing your site live using Git. So with our Git version control, and with Heroku installed in your command line interface in your shell, your Git, you would have access to Git, like Heroku to deploy it to Heroku, right? So another recap. So the past uh, MVC Express application running on a live URL looks like this. It shows the Heroku dot app, uh, Heroku app dot com. Okay, and just so you know, um, you do have, I think, a lot of free once you sign up, right? But you can just keep um, reusing the same or deleting the Heroku app and deploying the newer code if you want to test it out, right? So again, summary, we have the MVC, uh, HTML view using Pug and Bootstrap, another typo, right? And using Heroku for your production server, okay? That'll be all for this week, and let me know if you have questions. I'll be here to answer any of it. Thank you.